Okay, so we're gonna actually go through this GitHub page. This is a free and open source remote play client. It works for anything. So whether you're on Mac, Windows, Linux, it works for everything. Just go to the releases tab and download and install it. So if we go to releases, uh, I already have it installed on my Linux box. Uh, I'm on Arch Linux, so I didn't even need to download app image. I just did yay, dash S, and then put cha chaki, chaki. Chai, chai key. Yeah, well, you guys get to point this software <laughs> directly into uh, my my computer. So it, it launches directly. I don't even have to do anything. But if you do download the app image, just make sure it's executable. Um, you can right click hit properties and just say allow this program to execute and then just double click on it. So very easy. And then same thing for all these. They just basically install on their own. And you can even do this on Android. Um, it's just really amazing, this project. So install it using any of those methods, and then we'll go back to the main page and you can kind of see the actual project itself. Now, the actual setup on the PS4, one in settings, you gotta make sure you enable remote play. And I also recommend a hardwire. It means directly plugged in. And I like to set a static IP so I can just put the IP of my PlayStation 4. This also helps if you need to port forward to your PlayStation 4 or anything like that. Let's say you wanna do remote play outside your house directly into the PlayStation 4. You totally could do that using this software. So really good. Um, they're still working on a lot of features, but man, it is really, really good. And my big deal why I started looking this up is because Final Fantasy VII Remake is coming out and I wanna play it, so. We download, we install the actual thing. So that's this right here, which I just covered. Usage basically goes through, like I said, do all that and uh, launch the program. We're gonna start right here. I haven't registered mine yet. So I'm actually gonna pull over, pull it up over on this screen. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add it. Uh, over in settings, I'm gonna just show you the settings. You can do verbose logging. This logs a lot of stuff. Usually you don't need to do this unless you're having a lot of issues what resolution you wanna run at, uh, frames per second. Obviously 720 by 60 is pretty good, but since I'm on a gigabit network, I'm gonna go, oh, nah, eh. I thought I was gonna go 1080, but I don't have a PS4 Pro, so 720 it is. So let's register a new console. We'll say register new, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our host name in. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now, one thing I missed there was to obtain, you need your account ID. Now my host name ID um, obviously would work if I hadn't updated my PlayStation a while, but I, I think the kids play on there quite a bit. So we're gonna have to actually grab the ID. They did do an actual script here. We'll do and run it in terminal and follow the instructions. So let's click on this. We're gonna grab the raw file. This right here is all we need to do. So we'll just grab that, put it in terminal. So let's uh, flip over to a new new workspace and just wget that Python file. Now we should be able to run that. Let's chmod and just make that executable. And we should be able to do psn Python account ID. And this just script tells you how to actually get that ID to put it into the software. So once we get this in the software, we'll go ahead and do that. So obtain the URL following this browser. So we'll just go ahead, take this, copy it, and paste this in our browser. All right, so we got a code and a CID up in the top portion here and paste that right into our, boom, and there we go. So it retrieved the client ID and the DCI image ID and a whole bunch of other stuff. This is your account ID and it actually goes ahead and spits it out. So this is exactly what I need for my account ID. We'll copy it and we'll be able to paste that directly into um, our actual deal. So uh, it actually tells you exactly what you need for your account ID. So we'll go ahead, paste that in and then a pin number. So we'll register that as well. The host is that static IP we'll set up for it. So let's go ahead and do that. And it'll say something about a pin number. I actually need to go over to the PlayStation 4 and grab this and I will be right back. I have returned. I went to the PlayStation, said add device and it said uh, this pin. So 66040505. Um, now this pin is only good for 300 seconds. So if you take longer than five minutes to put this in, you know, print out a new pin number. So make sure you get your pin number correct. So we'll go register. 
says the console has been successfully registered. Okay. And close. So the host, I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP address after hitting uh, the actual registered console. And that should be it. Let's hit save. See if we can double click it to open it. And there we go. It actually registered. So now we're ready to go. I do need to get a ID and actually controller plugged in. They do recommend it actually being hardwired in. So I will go ahead, hardwire this in. However, I have had success in the past using Bluetooth connections, but just know your mileage will vary on your wireless, depending on your computer, your setup, all those things, where if you just plug it in, it just makes it a little easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and we'll go ahead and see if we can't get this uh, controlled by this controller. We might need to shut this back down and try it again. So we'll see. All right, I'm back. I, I actually switched out to Xbox 360, but I did get both these remotes working. Fun fact, the Xbox DRV uh, package I had installed here for Steam support and some other stuff, well, I think all those drivers got added into the kernel, so there was conflicting packages. So after removing Xbox DRV, so if you're on Debian, just do apt purge Xbox DRV, or on Arch, obviously use Pac-Man to remove that package. But after doing it, I am now uh, doing everything in here. So pretty cool. I am going to go install Final Fantasy 7. It's releasing tomorrow. So I'm going to start queuing that up. And then uh, I might see you guys sometime next week because, oh, I've been waiting for this game forever. And I actually haven't played on the PlayStation in a while. And uh, now I can actually go ahead and remote play it directly into here. So why uh, everybody's inside, don't tell the family. I can be out here working and... Uh, still be on the PlayStation 4 that's inside the house. So uh, <laughs> I'm about to have a lot of fun and I hope you will too. Uh, now using this open source software for, for this, it's, it's fantastic. All right, so that was Chiaki Remote Play. I absolutely love this software. It's so cool that I can now play inside my house. The only little hiccup I had there that I found was the actual remote play remote on the actual system had some issues with the Xbox DRV driver. After removing that, uh, the actual Linux kernel picked up all my controllers just fine, both the PS4 and also the Xbox 360. So I wanted to just throw in that uh, kind of road bump I ran into because I could have removed it, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna leave this in because you might actually run into the same issue. And other than that, everything was exactly as the documentation said. And I absolutely loved the setup process. And I'm going to be playing a little PlayStation 4. So I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to get back to some Final Fantasy 7. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one.